What's up, everybody? It's Shane by God Oakley, uh, a.k.a. Cody Shane by God Pierce. Um, I know that a lot of you haven't heard from me in a while, you know, and I don't want to get on here and rant too much. I just want everybody to know that um, I'm kind of regaining my confidence and I'm actually able to, not that I never wanted to show my face, but for a while I just didn't because I didn't really have enough confidence to even be around people for a while, which is why some of you may not have heard from me. Now, um, one of the things that I want to start doing is everybody knows how I feel about professional wrestling. It's my number one true love. Um, but I also feel like, and this is, you know, this is going to piss some people off, but I'm almost glad that it does. Um, you kind of, it's kind of hard to talk to wrestling fans nowadays because a lot of them don't act like real fans, you know, and, um, which is why I try to keep my opinions to myself because I don't mind arguing with somebody on the internet, but I also don't want to argue with a brick wall either. I don't want to turn around and argue with this wall right here, or this door right here, you know, uh, I just don't want to do that. I don't want to waste my time and my energy. Um, but anyway, what we're going to start doing is every week, I just want to start talking about, everybody knows that I'm a big uh, Alabama football fan, Braves baseball fan, Atlanta Falcons football fan, in that order, uh, very close, but in that order. And, uh, you know, I just want to go ahead and, and I, I know I picked a hell of a week to start it, you know, after an Alabama loss, but I think that says, I think that should say a lot about the confidence that I have in this team. Um, I'll be completely honest with you. I know that the whole world it's like the trendy thing that's that what have we heard for like the last 15 years almost it seems like in a row is that the dynasty's over right the dynasty's over here's what i have to say and first thing i want to talk about is the alabama tennessee game first of all from a real diehard true classy alabama football fan you will never hear an excuse, unless there is a legitimate excuse now. If there is a legitimate reason, then okay. It's just like when Grady Jarrett uh, freaking sacked Tom Brady the other day uh, whenever they were playing the Bucks. Now, I'm not saying that Atlanta would have won the game after that, but they would have had a chance to win the game. They, they, The referees and whatever, whatever you want to call that, I don't usually say stuff like that either. I truly believe those refs took uh, not necessarily a win away from Atlanta, but it could have been. I, I think that uh, it definitely we, – Atlanta could be sitting here at 4-2 and two right now. So I'm not going to sit here and say things don't happen. But I will say you won't get an excuse out of me if, if there isn't one warranted. And I don't think there is one warranted from Saturday night. Um, people can – I know first thing I'm going to hear, what about the penalties and what about the missed penalties? This is something that needs to be addressed. This is not towards Alabama fans, Tennessee fans, Gator, Georgia, whatever, Auburn fans, whatever. I want to make sure I'm <clears throat> that there are good calls and there are bad calls in every game. And I know that's not the popular thing to say. And I know that that's not what people want to hear. Now, keep in mind, I'm not defending Alabama when I say that necessarily. I'm actually kind of defending Tennessee in a way because all I've seen this week, well, you know, the hell, the only reason Tennessee beat Alabama is because they were some missed calls. There have been missed calls in Alabama games for Alabama and against Alabama. Let's not sit here and try to make this a one-sided thing, man. Because I promise you, if you really watch the games, you would know. Uh, so, what I'm trying to get at is that you're not going to get an excuse out of me. There's no reason for it. Okay, It's already Wednesday, October 19th, and in three days, Alabama plays Mississippi State. Last week is gone. I want to address, I think, in the game, offensively, Alabama looked fantastic. I think... Bryce Young, God, it was so nice to see Bryce Young back, man. He, it's like, uh, not Vern Lundquist, but uh, Brad Nessler calls him Houdini. God, I love that, man. He really is. They called him last year. They called him the point guard. He's a like a he's like Steph Curry playing playing quarterback. I absolutely freaking love that, man. Uh, <laughs> I really do. Um, I think offensively, Alabama looked great. I think Alabama has a better receiving core than what people may realize. I think Jacory Brooks. He's, he's a big reason why we won the Iron Bowl last year. Um, I know that there's a lot going on right now with Jermaine Burton. I hate that he did what he did. Um, it's inexcusable, and I know people are going to say, well, you know, you don't know what he said. And I agree. You know, people are hateful, and people, they, people think they can say whatever they want to to whoever. Uh, I don't think that being physical was necessarily the answer, but he should have at least told her off, you know. Um, if she said something foul or out of the way, because you just never know, man. Tennessee fans, 
the two or three. I only knew about three or four real Tennessee fans before they beat Alabama, but hey, that's fine. I don't care. They'll be gone. They'll be wearing red and black before you know it again. So uh, it's, if, if Georgia finds a way to beat them, uh, <laughs> they're going to be wearing red and black again. So I'm not really worried about three-week-long Tennessee fans, trust me. Um, and that's giving some of you credit because some of you haven't been Tennessee fans weren't Tennessee fans up until the Alabama Tennessee game now all of a sudden you're a big Rocky top guy yeah I'm, I'm sure you were uh but neither here nor there I think the big issue I know a lot of people are calling for Bill O'Brien's head I think some Alabama fans have become a little bit spoiled because Alabama scored 49 points in the game let's not act like Alabama hasn't put up 55 this year and put up uh 49 in the in, in a freaking uh even with the backup quarterback man you take Milrose turnovers away, and I'm not saying that you can't. I'm not saying that you – like, I know that's why the game's played. But you take his turnovers away, man, he had three touchdown passes. Imagine if he had come out with one more, turned one of those drives into another touchdown pass. People would have been had, people would have had a completely different opinion on the guy. I think it shows how quickly narratives can really influence how people look at the game. Um, and, you know, that that's a different rabbit hole for a different day. Um, I don't blame flags. I don't blame turnovers because – well, I do blame turnovers because you can't turn the ball over. Um, but at the end of the day, Tennessee lined up, and they had their will. They called their shot at the beginning of the week, and they beat Alabama. From me to them, smoke your cigars, have your fun, enjoy your dub. Um, you have a big showdown with Florida and with, with Georgia still to take care of. I don't know. They may have actually already played Florida. I may be wrong on that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that one. But I know they still have a showdown – with the Georgia Bulldogs, uh, and that, that may honestly end up being a number one versus number two matchup. And I would love to see Alabama get an opportunity to – really, if you think about it, those are the two teams that have beaten Alabama in the year 2022. So, you know, uh, <laughs> the last year since the 2020 season, Alabama's lost to A&M, to Georgia, and to Tech, uh, Tennessee, excuse me, uh, avenged the, the loss to Texas A&M just a couple of weekends ago. I would love for Alabama an opportunity to avenge both of those losses to Tennessee and to Georgia at some point. Uh, and you never know, man. This season, it really may pan out that way because you never know who's going to be in that top four spot. You just if, – if you're really calling it the way it is, man, I think Tennessee, they don't even have to play another game they're in. I, I think that the way that they – unless they just absolutely fall apart right here at the second half of the year, I think Tennessee is probably – they're they're a pretty solid – um, playoff contender. I think that's pretty clear at this point. I think Georgia, I, I guess they are, but to me they haven't shown anything that impressive besides beating Oregon the way that they did. Auburn's not a very good team. Uh, still to win by 32 in the SEC. I still got to give them that, though. Ohio State seems to be playing really good ball, and offensively they seem to be <laughs> Ohio State, you know. But I don't want people to forget about this Alabama team. And the reason I say that. It's because under Nick Saban, there have only been two completely unbeaten, uh, ch you know, teams in general under Nick Saban. It was 2009, and then a couple of years ago in 2020. Every other year, whether Alabama won an Addy or not, they lost at least one football game. And in this case, this was against a really, really, really. I think personally, the way that they played, if you look at the strength of schedule, and how they played in all these games and whatnot, I think Tennessee really should be the number one team in the country. Um, I think you can. I know you're going to have Jordan. You're going to have Ohio State and Clemson kind of still hovering up there because that's kind of where they were. Okay. But if you're really basing it off strength of schedule, strength of wins, et cetera, how good they've looked offensively, who they just beat in Neyland Stadium the other night, I think that they should be the number one team in the country. I really do believe that. And I believe that they are the number one team in the country. Whether they are ranked that position or not, I think they are the best team in the country. Um, and so, you know, it, it's it's one of those things. I cannot wait to see if Alabama – Alabama still got to play Mississippi State this weekend, and they're coming off tragically a huge loss of one of uh, their football players uh, at a very, very young age, man. I turned 25 this month, and, to, and as a matter of fact, in about a week and a half, and to hear of a young man passing away at 19, that, uh, that's an eye-opener, man. That, that's tough to even hear, really. Um, but I don't want to rant too much. Uh, I want to try to keep this around 10 minutes every week. Uh, I'm sure some of you will skip through. 
All I want to say is uh, I still think Alabama has a lot to play for. I, think, I still think that they have – I still think Alabama could go win the SEC championship and go win the national championship this year. I absolutely do. And I think that after all of these years, especially seeing that Alabama went on the road, and, yeah, they lost, they did, but to a really good – possibly the best team in the country and have a chance to actually beat them there at the end? I mean, come on, man. I think if Alabama straightens up the penalties and defensively they played great most of the year, they played great up until this game, in my personal opinion. Uh, I think this is the first game that they've kind of been like almost embarrassed, really. I think if Alabama straightens up, if they just cut the, turn, the, the penalties in half, man, and get an extra stop or two in every game, I think Alabama goes and repeat or not repeats, but they go do it again. Uh, and that's just, that's really how I feel. Again, not going to talk too much longer. I just want y'all to know I'm back. Shane by God Oakley is back. It's evening time. It's late. Uh, it's a very beautiful view up here where I live. I'm out here on the front porch with uh, me and Scooter Pooter. Um, I just want y'all to know I'm back. Uh, you'll start seeing a lot more of me. Uh, yeah, I'm tired. I look very tired because I am tired. Um, for those of you that made it this long, I can't believe you did. I can't believe you actually listened to me talk for this long. Um, you know, I, I'll see you guys. You might try to post every Wednesday night since that's what I did this week. Um, maybe previewing the upcoming matchup, which I don't really have time to do tonight, but previewing the upcoming matchup and then looking back on maybe how the last matchup went. Um, you know, there's a lot more that I could talk about, but that's going to be, I'm going to call it for this evening. Uh, for those that made it this long, thank you. Support me. Thank you for supporting me. Um, I stutter every other word that I say. I drop my phone at the very beginning of the video. I'm about as far from Mr. Perfect as you can get. Uh, but with that being said, I want to thank each and every one of you for not forgetting about me. For those of you that actually watched this video and actually cared about what I had to say, like, thank you. Um, subscribe, comment, like, do the whole YouTube thing. Um, I don't ever think I'll ever blow up like, a, <laughs> like those million plus subscribers kind of do, but... Um, I believe that I could. Absolutely, I believe that I could. And I, I believe that I have a lot to offer this world. And, you know, that's that's a different rabbit hole. It's a different topic for a different day. Um, but anyway, you know, thank you for listening. Um, you know, for life, it's Roll Tide, Chop On, and Go Birds, man. We out. Time to play the game.